Welcome back to our video series on Power BI Basics. Today we're talking about a really fun concept, and that's calculation groups. Calculation groups are really powerful in Power BI, and they just started coming into the mainstream. Before an update about a few months ago, you used to have to create them in a third-party tool like Tabular Editor. So what is a calculation group? Well, a calculation group allows you to define different calculation contexts um, without creating an individual measure. So take, for example, this total sales measure that I've created right here. What if I wanted to see the current month total sales, the prior month total sales, and the prior prior month total sales? Well, if I was just using measures, I would have to create three measures, three additional measures of this single measure wrapped in a uh, calculate function. But with a calculate calculation group, what I can do is I can just define those three filters, and then I can go ahead and I can bring over, for example, right here, my calculation group column and the measure total sales, and I'll go ahead and it'll calculate that for me. So let's take a look at how you can do this. First, you go into model view. Within model view, you can define a new calculation group by clicking this button right up here. If you're then in this data pop-out section and click model, you'll then be able to see your actual calculation group. So here's the one that I was showing you earlier. If you click calculation items, you can drag your different calculation items in different sort orders. So they sort in the correct order. So in this case, I wanna correct this. So prior, prior month sorts down and let's just confirm look if you like that change in my visual <clears throat> and then you can also create new calculation items by clicking right here and then creating new calculation items you can define a calculation item by clicking on each individual item right here you can then write out your expression so here i am going calculate then i'm going total sales and then i'm saying keep filters but i'm applying a filter on month of equals two now, you might notice one thing that I've done here is I've explicitly used the total sales measure in my calculate. So what that means, if I go back to my visual and I remove this, and let's just say I define a new measure. So I go over here and I go new measure, or I'm going to go new quick measure. And I'm going to go, uh, let's go to min average per category. And my base value, let's just say, is sales. My category, come on, my base value is sales. Do, do, do. Hopefully it lets me pick this. My base value is sales. Okay, it's not going to let me do that. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to copy this. And I'm just going to go new measure right here. And I'm going to paste this. And I'm going to go average right here, average um, average right here, right? If I now bring over average sales, you'll notice it's still calculating total sales. So like right now here, if I actually go ahead and I bring over total sales, you'll see they're the same value. So if I go back into my model view, what I can do is I can replace the explicit measure declaration right here with selected measure. So if I go here and I go selected measure, and I copy that. Now, and let me copy this one all the way through. So that one's good. And then copy down here, fix it here. Oh, and I hit the X there. Let me go back. All right, fix it here. Do, 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 do. Give me one second and fix it here. What you'll now see is that I'm calculating the average here and the total sales here, but I'm using the same calculation group. So I'm technically calculating six different measures here with just two actual measures and a single calculation group. So this is where calculation groups get really, really powerful. Um, 
this is a very advanced concept. We're covering it in this basic series just so that you know it's possible. If you're interested in learning more, we'll probably do a little bit more of an in-depth video a little later um, in the year. But hopefully this has been helpful. And if you're interested in learning more about Power BI, we're currently releasing short, easy to follow daily videos where we're teaching you how to use Power BI from the ground up, or at the very least, get you familiar with some of its core features and what's possible. If you like what you saw and you found this helpful, please subscribe.